Now the uh, first, first problem you asked about was number two, which said f of x is equal to the square root of x minus five over the square root of x. And the instruction said to find the domain of this function. Well, whenever we have uh, square roots, and specifically when we're finding the domain of a radical with an even index, and I'll talk more about that here in, in a second, but what we do is we set what is under the radical greater than or equal to zero, and then we solve. So here we got um, uh, two radicals. A square root is a, sp a special type of radical. Now your index, when you got a radical, your index is whatever number is in the slot right here. And if you don't have a number, then it's by default two, it's a square root. So on these instructions, when I say domain of radical with an even index, that includes the square roots. Now we're going to, step one, set what's under the radical greater than or equal to zero. So we'll set x minus five is greater than or equal to zero. And we'll set x is greater than or equal to zero. The x minus five comes from the square root on top. And this x comes from the square root on the bottom. And then you solve each one of these. So that gives us x is greater than or equal to 5. And this one already has x by itself. When I say solve it, you want to get the x by itself on one side. And I may be assuming something here. What we do is we take the negative 5, we move it to the right side. Anytime you move anything across your inequality symbol, the sign changes. So the negative 5 becomes a positive 5. Now you have to be careful when you got um, when you got two square roots like this. If I were to list what this means, uh, at least um, in terms of uh, integers, x is greater than or equal to 5 would be 5, 6, so on. x is greater than or equal to 0 would be 0, 1, and so on. Now, these, the essential idea on these is we cannot have a zero or a negative number inside of a radical with an even index. If I were to plug these values back in, if I put what five cannot have zero. Long weekend. Cannot have, I knew that didn't sound right when I was putting it down. We cannot have a negative number inside of radical with an even index. So if I were to put 5 in here, 5 minus 5 is 0, and that's okay. If I put 5 down here, that's square root of 5, that's okay. If I put 6 in, 6 minus 5 is 1, that's okay, it's not negative. If I put 6 down here, we got square root of 6, that's not negative. So those are fine. But if I put 0, 0 minus 5 is negative 5. We'd have a square root of a negative number. So this, this one does not work. What you'll find is that uh, most of the times this part will drop away. Well, I, sh I shouldn't say that. One part will drop away. Um, in this case, uh, the part that causes a negative number inside of a square root. So our answer is going to be x is greater than or equal to 5. Or if I were to write it in um, interval notation, the greater than or equal to means I put a bracket. Bracket means it includes the 5. And then it goes to positive infinity because it's a greater than. And that would be your answer. Now number 3 was f of t is equal to t squared plus t. And this is a difference uh, quotient. They're asking you to find f of t plus h minus 
f of t, all over h. Well, our first step is we want to identify f of t. Well, that's easy. Uh, f of t is given. I didn't used to include that as a step until I had um, uh, I had enough uh, students ask me, how, well, how do you find f of t? Uh, that I decided I should actually state that as a step. But f of t is always just given. Our second step, we want to find f of t plus h. Now this is just evaluating a function. So to find f of t plus h, we're going to go through our f of t, and everywhere we have a t, we'll put it in parentheses. So we'll have parentheses squared plus parentheses. So um, again, I just went through the t squared plus t and just replaced the t's with uh, parentheses. Now for evaluating functions, it's always the same. Whatever's inside the parentheses right here is automatically what you put in right here and right here. So we're going to put t plus h in here. And then we want to simplify that. t plus h squared is uh, t plus h times t plus h. Now these parentheses aren't doing anything, so I can just drop them. So we've got plus t plus h. Now over here, I'm going to uh, FOIL this. t times t is t squared. That's the first. t times h is ht. That's the outer. h times t is ht. That's the inner. And h times h is h squared plus t plus h. So we multiply the first terms together, the outer terms, the inner terms, and the last terms. Um, now let's combine together like terms. Like terms where you have the same variable to the same power. So ht plus ht is 2ht plus h squared plus t plus h. Then our set third step is we want to plug f of t and f of t plus h into f of t plus h minus f of t all over h. A little bit more to it than that. And typically, and somehow, eliminate the h in the denominator. So this, this h right here is our, our end goal. We're trying to get rid of that. Okay. Well, f of t plus h we found uh, in step two, and f of t we identified in step one. So we're just going to plug in the values we found. So we'll plug this in for f of t plus h, and I'll plug this in for f of t. So I'm going to have, and again I'm plugging in this formula here, so I'm going to have t squared plus 2ht plus h squared plus t plus h minus, and you want to make sure you put a parentheses around this second part here, and f of t is t squared plus t all over h. Well, now we're going to try to simplify it to give her that h in the denominator. So I got t squared plus 2ht plus h squared plus t 
plus h. Remember a negative out in front of your parentheses flips the sign of everything inside. So that's going to flip the sign of the t squared and of the t. So the positive t squared becomes a negative t squared and a positive t becomes a negative t. All over h. Now we want to combine together like terms. Like terms, same variable, the same power. Here we got a t squared and here we got a t squared. t squared minus t squared drops away. Um, here we got a t and here we got a t. t minus t drops away. So that's going to leave us 2ht plus h squared plus h. And let me go through and double check. Okay. All over h. Now after we do that, you notice that everything up on top has an h. So we can factor it out. Now when you factor it out, uh, here's 2ht. The h is gone, so we're left with 2t plus h squared. We had two h's. We took one of them away, so that leaves us a single h. Plus, and we took this h away, and it appears like everything's gone. When everything appears like it's gone in terms of factoring, you're always left with a 1. And it makes sense if you go backwards and multiply this back through, you see that it has to have a 1 here. Now we have h times something over h, and since this is multiplication up on top, I can cancel this h with this h. You could not cancel it in the previous step because of these pluses here. Everything has to be multiplication. So then that leaves us 2t plus h plus 1. And that's our answer. I'm gonna grab a drink here, and then I'll, and then I'll scroll up, and um, and then erase the, the screen. I see your um uh, webcam pointing at um something. <laughs> Ah, there it's pointing to the wall. Okay. Now let's take a look at number five. It takes a little while for this clear off. I'm doing an undo so it's going through and uh, cleaning out. Um, there it goes. Okay, number five. We got f of x is equal to 3x plus 2. And we got g of x is equal to x minus 4. And the instructions want us to find this right here. What this uh, says, this is not multiplication. This is function notation. This says first, find f divided by g. And then plug x equals 4 in and simplify. So that's what that notation uh, is indicating. So first off, we'll just find f divided by g. Now, typically, when you're doing um, some kind of operations with functions, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, you put parentheses around each function and put whatever operation in between them. Um, so I'll put parentheses around each function and then the operation in between them. Now, this is division, so a fraction symbol means division. Now, these parentheses aren't actually doing anything at this point, so those drop away. We have this, and then the second thing 
we then plug x equals 4 in and simplify. So everywhere I have an x, I'll put in the 4. And this is just evaluating functions. It always is the same. You go through, you replace all of your variables with parentheses. Then whatever's inside the parentheses right here will always be what you plug in right here. So I'll put a 4 there, and I'll put a 4 there. That's interesting. Uh, 3 times 4 is 12, plus 2, and I, I see why you had the question on this. 4 minus 4 is 0, which gives us 14 divided by 0. You can't have division by 0, so this is undefined. So that's kind of a, a trick one. Not only test your uh, operations, but also test your evaluating, and then uh, test if you remember what division by 0 uh, indicates. Now there's one other um, one other thing that you had a question on. Um, well, actually, I, I replied in an email about the one about building a function, but uh, let me just briefly talk about that. If you've gone through and worked the problems out of the out of the book about uh, the domain, then that'll help you in figuring out how to how to build a, a function. For example, if all it told me was to find a function where the domain was where like x is greater than or equal to 3. Well, if I think about my um, about my uh, square roots we just looked at, if I had the square root of x minus 3, remember to find the domain, you set what's underneath the radical, greater than or equal to 0, and then you solve it. So I give us x is greater than or equal to 3. So this would be an example of a function where this is true. So that's what you have to kind of think of it going backwards. Um, you have to think about how did you find the domain and range and then use that to, to build this, this function. Now the other item you uh, had asked about was, um, was about the word processor. And um, I'm going to show you. This isn't true in all versions of Word. If you want to put math symbols into uh, Word, then uh, there's there's two different ways. Uh, I, I would suspect every version of Word has this first first method. If you choose insert, and um, hopefully you can see that. I'm going to drop that um, box down a little bit. But if you um, you have your insert tab, then there's an object here. If I choose that to object, then uh, there is one that says Microsoft Equation. So if I choose Microsoft Equation and click OK, it'll pop up here. And I know this is pretty small, um, but if I want to do a, fr a fraction, well, actually, if I just type f of x equals first. If I want to do a fraction, I do this um, this option here, and I choose the one that looks like a fraction. And I'm on top here. If I want a square root there, I do that same uh, option, and I choose the square root. And then I'll type in x minus 3. And if I come down here, and if I want to put a square root down there, and I'll put x there. And um, after you get done typing whatever you want, then when you close this, it automatically inserts it into your document. And you can click this one time and resize it, make it bigger if you need if you need to. Now that's one way. Uh, actually there's three ways. Uh, the second way, it's only in newer versions of Word. If you choose insert, you'll see an equation over here. And it'll put an equation here, and it'll throw you into the design tab. Now if I choose this fraction, and choose a fraction here, I have to click in the top part in the numerator, and then click the radical option and choose a square root. Then I'll click inside that um, box, type in x minus 3. Then I have to click in the bo bottom box here, choose the square root again. Click in the box and type X. So that'll put a um, uh, math notation. 
And another way that people do it is they just simply uh, will type square root of x minus 3 divided by square root of x. Um, so they do the best they can to put the math symbols on there. But those are the three uh, different ways you can uh, put math symbols on there. Yeah, let me put this back. There. Um, let me look one more time for that chat window that I can't seem to find. New share, pause share, annotate, remote control, more, breakout sessions, invite. Um, hmm. Oh, I could hear you there briefly. Did you have any uh, other questions on anything? Yeah, I can hear you now. Oh. Okay. And um, don't hesitate if you if you need to see any problems worked as you're working through the week. You don't have to wait till Sunday. If you can't figure out certain problems out of the uh, out of the book, you know, as you're going through and doing the problems that they they say you should work. If there's any of those you can't uh, figure out, just just email me. And say, hey, work this. Now I'll create a YouTube video, just kind of like what you're seeing now, and I'll put the put the link out there. We're good. Oh, yeah, they have good videos. Okay. Okay, that, that sounds good. Oh, I don't have much of a life, so I, I love math anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing how some of that slips away, but a lot of it comes back pretty fast, too. Well, have a good afternoon.